How's it going trainers and welcome to another Pokemon Go PvP video. Today we're going to be diving into the Sinister Cup meta yet again, uh, specifically the ghost types this time around. We're going to be covering Alola Marowak, Dusclops, Haunter, and Driftblim. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. First things first, we have Alola Marowak. Alola Marowak can be running Fire Spin or Hex as the fast move, with Bone Club and Shadow Ball as the two preferred charge moves. Notable wins such as Metacham, Primeape, Mawile, Gardevoir, Dusclops, Claydol, Bronzong, and all that you can see here are fantastic. But uh, as you see in the Orange Circle, Steelix, and Girafferig, Fire Spin gives you an especially great advantage against these two, whereas if you had Hex as your fast move, you would not have a winning matchup against either of those two. So that is one decent reason to be running Fire Spin. Now talking about this debate, we're going to go specifically into Fire Spin versus Hex. Uh, when they go into the matchups of, what is it, 93 different Pokemon in the Sinister Cup, Fire Spin gets 80 wins, 7 losses, and 6 ties, compared to Hex's 75 wins, 9 losses, and 9 ties, for an 86% versus 80%. Uh, as we can see, Fire Spin does 15 damage with 10 energy each, whereas Hex is 9 damage with 11 energy each. Uh, putting all that together, not only does Fire Spin allow you to win, Five more matches than Hex does. More importantly, allows you to win against Steelix and Girafferig. So you get that just as good energy gain, more damage per move, and a higher win percent ratio. So, truth be told, Fire Spin is definitely the way to go with the fast move for a little Marowak. Next up, we got Haunter. Uh, he is very, very glassy. That's why it's in the title. Uh, you're going to want to run Shadow Claw, Shadow Punch, and Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball being a legacy move, and if you do not have the legacy move, then I definitely cannot re recommend Haunter. Um, notable wins such as Alolan Raichu, Metacham, Primeape, Driftblim, Cresselia, Dusclops, Steelix, and Alola Marowak. Now let's dive a little bit into Haunter's specialties. Haunter's main focus is to completely counter not only the fighting types, but also the remaining ghost types such as Driftblim, Dusclops, and Alolan Marowak, and even Bayonet. However, Haunter is extremely glassy and gets demolished by confusion users like Psychic types especially, and even neutral damage such as something from like a bubble from a Polyrath or Smackdown from Bastiodon will rip through your Haunter because it is just that glassy, so it's really an argument of how much damage you want to put out quickly versus pretty much melting to just about everything. Now we have Driftblim. You're going to want to run Hex with the fast move, Ominous Wind, and Shadow Ball for your two charge moves. Uh, notable wins are pretty much the Confusion users, such as Gardevoir, Gallade, Cresselia, Bronzong, uh, but also a little Marowak, uh, Metacham, and Polyon, and Dusclops. So those are all a good variety of coverage for Driftblim. As far as Driftblim's specialties, Driftblim can go toe to toe with any of the fighters, being Polyrath, Primeape, or Metacham. Uh, pretty much most of the Psychic types and Alola Marowak with Fire Spin is really gonna lose to Driftblim. Uh, Driftblim's secondary typing of flying kind of really opens up weaknesses that you wouldn't generally think of, such as Ice, Rock, and Electric. So you really gotta watch out for moves like Ice Punch on both Metacham and Polyrath, uh, Aurora Beam on Cresselia, Stone Edge on Bastidon, Thunderbolt on Girafferig, and Wild Charge on Alolan Raichu. And another positive to give to Driftblim is Ominous Winds. Chance of a buff is 10%, so when you can pull it off, it really significantly changes the outcomes of your battle. So let's go ahead and talk about Dusclops next. You're gonna wanna run Hex, Shadow Punch, Fire Punch. Notable wins being Metacham, Gallade, Gardevoir, Alola Raichu, Claydol, Primeape, Cresselia, Mawile, and Bronzong. Dusclops Fire Punch pretty much gives it additional coverage against Steel types, so it gives you kind of an out to something like Steelix or a Mawile. Uh, and Shadow Punch is really, really spammy for Dusclops, so that's pretty much what Dusclops wants to do. But uh, much like the other ghost types, Dusclops is capable of handling the psychic types and the fighters. Uh, but it does fall to, I believe, pretty much all the rest of the ghost types, at least the other main three being Alola Marowak, um, Haunter, and Driftblum. So keep that noted. 
So with all this being covered, we're gonna go ahead and step into a couple best of threes, mostly highlighting Haunter and Dusclops. So let's get right into that. So first up, I believe we're gonna be leading with our Haunter and we're gonna walk into an Apollyon. Now this is an okay matchup, but the waterfall damage is doing decently even though it's neutral. We're gonna go for the Shadow Punch right away to get a shield out of him. And then we're gonna charge up a little bit and I think we're going to switch. Nope, we died and we melted to a Confusion user just like that before we get Confusion. We switch into Dusclops and to Shadow Punch this Gallade right away and get it just about out of here. He does get to presumably Leaf Blade and we're going to shield it because we want to keep a little bit of an advantage since this is our only other Ghost type on our team of three. Take down the Gallade, he comes back in with Empoleon and we got Fire Punch for the Sucker. Now I know Empoleon is a Water type but his Steel type type Subtyping makes Fire Punch still do decent damage compared to what Shadow Punch would have done. We're going to shield this Hydro Pump or Flash Cannon because it will kill either move, and we're going to finish off and pulling on with Fast Moves. In comes a Polyrath, we're going to Shadow Punch before we die real quick. And then we're going to switch immediately to Metacham so that we can't charge any more energy against our Dusclops. He's going to come in with a Dynamic Punch so that does an okay amount of damage. And we're going to go all the way up to our Psychic, but go for Ice Punch, because he still has one shield that we want to take. So use your low energy move so you get to Psychic faster. He's going to get to a, another Dynamic Pinch, possibly, yep, and almost kill us. And we just miss getting to the Psychic. But we do have a Shadow Punch waiting on our Dusclops, and this is what is going to come in for that Clutch win. And that's why it's a good idea to switch and not let your Pokemon be farmed. Next, I believe we're going to be leading with Haunter again, right into an Alola Marowak, and this is a win for us. It is a two shield situation, so we are going to have to give up shields because of how glass it is. We get to a Shadow Punch, she he shields, so we're going to shield. Boom. A Bone Club, no problem. Switches into Steelix. We could have stayed in that, but we're going to go ahead and take the switch advantage with Metacham and get some counters in there. We're going to shield this possible crunch which it is and we're gonna charge up past a psychic a little bit and then use it as we do horribly at the bubbles and he's gonna come in with another presumably crunch yep does an okay amount of damage and we're gonna try to get to that ice punch because he's in so such low of health finishing off the steelix now we see what he's got next he's got a little marowak so we're gonna switch and let our haunter die because we want our Dusclops to finish off this. So basically using Haunter as a shield. Here's our Dusclops. Now this could be Shadow Ball. And it's not, it's a Bone Club. And we're gonna farm a little bit and then do our Shadow Punch to finish off this little Marowak and have a little bit of energy going into this Metacham. So we're gonna Shadow Punch just about right away. Does about a third of the damage. We're going to get to another Shadow Punch. So this is going to get it, that Metacham into the low yellow rain, almost to the red. Oh, it does get it to the red. And we are going to switch into our Metacham to let our Metacham take the hit. And then D Dusclops farm out that Metacham. GG. In the next game, we are going to lead with Metacham. And he leads with Polyrath. Now this is actually a positive matchup. Uh, as it goes with fighters, Metacham has the advantage. He switches to Drifloom, we switch to our Haunter. Now this is going to be an Ominous Wind. An Ominous Wind gives that chance for a buff. He doesn't get it, we're going to go for our Shadow Punch, which will be super effective. He shields, so we're both down to one shield. We're going to beat him with our Shadow Punch to his Ominous Wind. See if he shields. We took his last shield. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and let our Haunter die. This is a little bit pointless. He gets the buff. We're going to come in with Polyrath because that bubble neutral damage is good enough. But he does get to another Ominous Wind and we're going to shield just because it's buffed. Now we have our Polyrath against another Polyrath. And Dynamic Punch is going to do decent damage against an opposing Polyrath. It is still the stab and as you can see, it gets into the yellow. Now he's probably going to come in with his own Dynamic Punch. We're going to just barely live that and try to get to a nice punch in time, which we do, which will finish his Polyrath. And now he's going to come in with his Empoleon, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we do have our counter stab fast move uh, Metacham, 
And Psychic is honestly going to be our best bet because Ice Punch ain't going to really do anything. But now we're trying to get that and we finish it. And that's going to be a good game. In this next set of three, we're going to lead with Haunter yet again. And we're leading into Steelix. Now this isn't the best matchup, but it is a slightly winning matchup. We'd rather use our Haunter for something better, but we are going to go for the Shadow Punch because we don't want to give her switch advantage. If he doesn't shield, it does great damage. We're going to shield this Crunch. And we're going to get to another Shadow Punch and most likely force another shield out of her, which we do. And try to get to another Shadow Punch and we just miss it and it's not worth saving Haunter when we can farm with our Metacham and get some energy. She comes in with Driplum, and this is why Ice moves are really, really sneaky. So Ice Punch is going to be super effective against Driplum. We're going to switch right to Dusclops to get super effective fast move damage in on it. We're going to shield this potential Shadow Ball, which it is. That would have done bad, bad damage to us. We're going to Shadow Punch. She shields, so now we're both shieldless, and we are going to beat her to a Shadow Punch since she used a Shadow Ball last. And finish off that Driplum. In comes an alone Marowak, and we are in a little bit of trouble. We're gonna Shadow Punch, but he is gonna get to a Shadow Ball before we could possibly get to another. And I'm gonna try to switch into Metatam to take up that Shadow Ball damage, but we just missed doing it. She's gonna finish off our Dusclops, and our Metatam does not stand a chance. Just missed that switch timer. So Ice Punch, do everything we can. But here comes a Shadow Ball, which will definitely secure the win for our opponent. So we'll go into game two. Game two, we are going to lead with Polyrath. Polyrath leads into a Driflim, and this is an okay matchup because we do have Ice Punch for it. And she might not expect it. Let's see what we get going. It does come real quick. We get it, and it does over half damage. She's coming in with Ominous Wind. We are going to shield it. Hope she doesn't get the buff. She does get it, though. This Ice Punch will still kill but she's going to get to another Ominous Wind just before us. We're going to shield it since it's buffed, and we're going to get that Ice Punch and hope to take a shield from her or finish this buffed Driftblim. We're going to come in and switch to our Haunter to quickly kill it, but she comes in with Cresselia, which is melting us, but we get to a Shadow Ball and sneak that sucker in there and win a matchup we really shouldn't have never done. And then another Shadow Claw finishes off the Driftblim, and then a Hex or Fire Spin comes in, Finishes off our Haunter. That was a lot of things that happened in a short amount of time. We are going to Ice Punch into this alone Marowak, and really this is a bit of a hopeless matchup. Dynamic Punch will do nothing. Ice Punch will do nothing. Shadow Ball will wreck us. GG. We do have Metacham still. Metacham is kind of in the same scenario. We're going to try to get to a Psychic because that is still stab, decent damage. She gets to a Shadow Ball, and we don't live it, even though we have the Psychic ready. So GG's. Game 3 of this matchup, we're going to lead with Haunter yet again. See what we get going. Haunter against any fighter is great, but against Polyrath, it is the worst fighting type matchup. We're going to go for a Shadow Punch right away. It does half damage. She switches. We're switching. Take Dusclops against Driftworm. We're going to just miss getting to Shadow Punch before. An ominous win, definitely. There's no way she has a Shadow Ball if we just got the Shadow Punch. We let it go. We Shadow Punch. So we get a shield out of her, we do, so we now have shield advantage. This has to be an ominous win, but we're going to shield it because we want to live. And here comes our Shadow Punch. Let's see if we could either force her to stay in even shields or take shield advantage. She wants to be even shields. We finish her with a Hex. We almost have a Shadow Punch ready for what might come next. It's an Alola Marowak. We get to the Shadow Punch, which will be super effective damage. Can we take her last shield? We do. So now when our Dusclops dies, we have a one shield advantage on her, and we have a Haunter ready to nuke it. So we are going to shield this Bone Club and Shadow Punch it, which will do pretty decent super effective damage to the old Marowak, which has been a problem for us recently. Finish it off with a Shadow Claw. Here comes a Polyrath to finish off our Haunter, but we have, I believe, our Polyrath in the back ready to destroy it. Ice Punch will pretty much take this matchup, but we're going to go for the Dynamic Punch to definitely win it, and that'll be a GG. I hope you guys learned a little bit about the ghost types of the Sinister Cup meta. I want to thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.